Well, praise the Lord, hallelujah, and thank you, Jesus. It's around that time right here on KAZ Radio, where today I have to spotlight on two of my most favorite people, none other than Apostle Greg McCurry and Pastor T. How are you guys doing today? We are blessed by the best, Apostle James. How about yourself? You know, I'm wonderful. You know, I, I, I'm so happy to have you both in the studio today because you guys got some awesome things going on as we just saw in that intro um you have a book books yes <laughs> being the yes. released yes. Yes. but 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 now before i get into all of that i want to know mm -hmm. and my audience wants to know yeah. from each of you okay we'll start with you pastor okay how did apostle how did jesus christ come into your life oh my goodness you know my testimony is um I was out there in the streets and uh, doing all kind of things, and, and, and I had an encounter with Jesus one day, mm. and it, it just changed my whole life. I was a crackhead. Wow. I was doing a whole lot of other things. Um, and uh, one day, somebody invited me to church. Mm. You know, an invitation is something. When somebody just said, hey, why don't you come and go with me? And uh, I had gotten to the point where I tried everything else. I was like the, the woman with the issue of blood. Mm. I done been everywhere, tried everything, and nothing worked. And I walked into uh, the house of God one day, had an encounter with Jesus that forever changed my life. And I've been off and running, and I ain't turning back. Back since. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. and, and now, uh, uh, Pastor T, tell us your testimony. How did Jesus Christ come into your life? Well, I, I want to say that I grew up in the church. Okay. So, you know, our family was always in the church. And... I was doing my own thing as a teenager, but always had the love for the Lord in my heart. Um, I, I, I wasn't trying to be no pastor now. I wanted to be a <laughs> member. I wanted to be a pew warmer, but I wasn't trying to be no pastor. That was the last thing on my list of things to do. Right, right. So um, when God called me, it was like, you know, people would say that I could see that on you. I could see that, but I couldn't see it on myself. Wow. Um, we went to a service. A woman prophesied to me for 30 minutes straight and told me all these things about, about me having a word in my mouth for the people and yes. this and that and the other. And believe it or not, Apostle James, I want to say maybe 30 days later, you gave us a call to come and fill in at the Phyllis Wheatley to yeah. you That's when you what was happened. having a, um, a sabbatical. Yeah. And well, yes. So Who was that prophet? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So it all just lined wow. up. Once lined I up. said yes, yeah. you know, I reluctantly said yes. Yeah. I know some people are searching and wanting to be in ministry. I, I wasn't. That wasn't what I was trying to do. But since I said yes, I want to be the best that I can be at it. So connect the dots for me, guys. Okay. Okay. You've written three books. Yes. Okay. So from being pastoring now for nine years. Yes. You decided to together release. Three awesome books. Yes. Uh, the first book I want to talk about and, and let our audience get to know a little bit about is this Momentum. Oh. Momentum. <laughs> Momentum. Ready, That's set, Greg's go. Book. Momentum. <laughs> well, without giving it all away, okay. yeah, 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 tell yeah. us about Momentum. This is crazy. Okay. I'm telling you, um, <laughs> we started on last year. We tapped into something, Apostle. Um, I was teaching about um, Elijah and Ahab. Okay. And when Elijah uh, went up on the mountain and he prayed with expectation, because we was on expectation, but then once the rain, uh, they heard a sound, the Bible says, of abundance, and he told Ahab, you better get off this mountain. And they started going off the mountain, and the Bible says Elijah outran Ahab, and Ahab was in a chariot. Mm. So it was like okay. he had some momentum, Come you on. know, he had some supernatural momentum and he outran his Ahab and God was saying, you about to outrun your enemy. You about Amen. to outrun everything. And it started into a little series and then it began to be our, um, our theme Ooh, for the year. And 2019 is a year of momentum. We're moving, we're going, oh. we're picking up momentum. We're getting victory after victory. And so my wife was like, you need to make that a book. And wow. I said, really? Really? And she said, that would be an awesome book to begin to put it into words, what you've been preaching about, because it has changed our whole congregation. This year has been an absolutely phenomenal, 
crazy off the hook year because people are moving and going and doing because now we got momentum and we're off and we're running and wow. we ain't turning, turning back. back. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. So that's powerful. So I, that gives me some inspiration that yeah. you can have a sermon, yeah, a series, yes, and that series can turn out to be a book that's changing mm -hmm. the lives of its members. Yes. Um, that's what we did. We decided to take our series, because I'm a series preacher. Okay. Um, I never preach one message and let it go. Whatever I preach for the year, I preach it all year long. What? Um, I don't let it go, because faith wow. comes by hearing. hearing. Amen. So if I preach it one time, mm. you have not grasped it. But if I preach it and 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 preach it, by that time, that word has gone from logos to rhema, yes. which means now it's living in you. And then now we can see you become the living, walking epistle that all men can read. And so we do series. And my wife said, you know what? Since we're doing all these series, why don't we take those series and put them in book form and then allow people to enjoy it in the written word? Wow. That's that entrepreneurial spirit. <laughs> Always. You know. <laughs> you know. It started as one book. It started, started one book. But, you know, you can't never give her one thing. Right. I left exactly. the house. Right. I left the house, went to the gym. <laughs> And came back, came and it was three books. Three books. <laughs> That's how she do it, you know, because the Bible said, he that find the wife find a good thing and obtains favor. Amen. Well, I done got the favor of the, the Lord, Lord with this woman <laughs> of God, yes. <laughs> so, so now, uh, uh, Pastor T, I know that that uh, you're very familiar with with writing books. I mean, uh, you have a book inspired me. I, I, running things. Running things. One and two, yeah. Okay. So, tell us about the person. The person, the person with power. The person with power. I'm sure that's the one you've written. Of yes. course. Yes. The <laughs> person <laughs> with power. So the person with power is talking about the Holy Spirit. Okay. So it says the person with power, Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside. Yeah. And that's a sermon series that I did as well. So I normally um, teach once a month at the church okay. and every fourth Sunday I teach. So in 2017, I did a series about the Holy Spirit and it was an exhaustive teaching about the Holy Spirit. I talked about who the Holy Spirit was, that he was a person, not a force, not a spirit, yeah. not a being. And then we went into the Old Testament where the Holy Spirit came upon believers. And then we talked about the fruit of the Spirit. We talked about the gifts of the Spirit. And then we talked about the last days when God is going to pour out his mm. Spirit on his yeah. sons and daughters. Mm. So yeah, this book is all about the Holy Spirit. So if you ever wanted to know something about the Holy Spirit, it's probably going to be answered in that book. Really? Mm -hmm. And can so, I say this? Please. Um, while she was teaching this, um, <clears throat> yes. so uh -huh. many people got filled oh, yes. with, with the Holy yes. Spirit uh, because she went through a whole year, um, once a month, teaching on Holy Spirit. People off the streets, people who never experienced the Holy Spirit were coming in getting filled with the Holy Spirit. So this book is absolutely impactful in allowing people to understand who the Holy Spirit is and allow them to want to have it. Amen. Wow. And that's my prayer for the book, Apostle James, that people will read that book. And if you desire the Holy Spirit, that the Lord will give you that gift. Um, in the, and then we're going to go back over a few other things, but you got the book sitting there in the middle. This is called Giving, Giving. God's Divine Exchange Rate. Uh -huh. Now, that's the book that we wrote, wrote together. I wrote it together. Yeah, together. yeah so yeah. that's the his, hers, and this is ours. Ours. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about both of you, Giving God's Divine Exchange Rate. Well, this here was uh, very powerful. We did a teaching at our church on giving. Once a year, we always do something wrapped around giving. Usually my wife does it. This time she invited me in and said, we need to do this together. And we began to exhaust the scriptures on how to give and what it looks like to give. We are givers. Right. We live um, by our giving. We don't live by our income. We live by our outcome. Right. And so... Um, we began to do this, and I want to say this, um, when we did this teaching, it amazed us. Our giving in our church went up 40%. The numbers don't the one, lie. The numbers don't lie. Listen, we went from one number. I'm talking about people who never tithe, people who never gave, people who never. Listen to what I just said, y'all. Never. never, never gave, started tithing and started giving and we started looking at the numbers and it was amazing we got this year we say god gonna wow us uh works of wonders and really i'm telling you these are teaching books that tell us about teaching give you and we talked about our our testimony so it's just not about the word it's about what we've experienced 
offering went up 40% and it's been consistent. Yeah. Wow. And then people um, submitted their testimonies about giving. So the topics that we go over in the um, Giving God Divine Exchange Rate, we talk about when you give, there's a divine exchange rate yeah. that happens. Yeah. So when you give your tithes, the scripture says that he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. When you give your offering, he says that you can expect a harvest a hundred, I mean, 30, 60, 100 fall. Right. When you you give a first fruit offering a first fruit you're showing God that I'm not dependent on money you are my source money is not our source when you give your alms that's giving to the poor that's being a blessing to somebody when you give alms the Bible says that God will give you that back so those are the four main teachings that we go over it's a yes. chapter about tithes a chapter about offering seed sowing uh, a chapter about alms giving and a chapter about first fruit giving and then we talk about the attitude of a giver God wants a cheerful giver Giver. So if you're in a service and they're cohorting you into giving, yeah. are you really giving cheerfully? Right. Now, you know, I, I, I had talked to you uh, about a week or so ago, and, you know, I always hear people say they put international behind whatever they're doing. Yes. And they only go to Akron or, <laughs> or Columbus, <laughs> Ohio. Okay, so 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 when I saw McCurry's Ministry International, I I, I was suspect. Well, don't be suspect. So so where so where are you guys going? So, that's so international. Tell well, me this, about it. This is another crazy story. See? Okay, like I say, I, I leave I leave my house one way. Okay, and when I come back, um, my house we're totally different. <laughs> So I go to the gym again. These okay, are my gym visits. And gym while I'm visit, at the right. gym, we uh -huh. give her time to spend time with God. Right. And by the time I got back, my wife has set up an international book tour. <laughs> because we're going to London. We're, we actually are going to London, and we're going to Europe in June on a 10-day vacation. And so she has already planned for the places that we're going to be, and we're going to do some book tours. So this is her. This is how she think. This is how I'm talking about. When you're talking about Ephesians 3 and 20, exceedingly and abundantly, way above that you can ask me uh -huh. by the power that works. We are operating in, in that, that right now. I went to the gym, came back, and now I went from, first of all, just being an apostle, right? Right. And now then I came back from one day, and I was an author. Wow. Then I left again and went to the gym, and, and I was an international author. Wow. Um, and, and listen, that's why we said it's momentum, because we're all wow. in and we're running and things are happening so fast that that our head is swimming so yes we are going international yeah okay. we're, we have um we're going to london england yes mm -hmm. we're going to paris france yes we are we're going to turkey we're yes. going to greece yes at the end of the year i'll be in the bahamas and oh, that, yeah and then at the in november we'll both be on a cruise to cuba so he'll be preaching on the cruise we'll and have our book, have signing, book signing and i'll be cruise. speaking on the cruise so okay, yeah we in <laughs> <laughs> this is real. This is real. This is real. And is this a dream interview that I'm having <laughs> no, no. right here? Um, um, this me, is absolutely awesome. Let me tell you what St. John 10, 10 says in the yes. Message Bible. Yes. It, and it talks about the abundant life, right? But he said in the Message Bible, he said, I'm going to give you a life you never dreamed of. Truly, we are living the dream life. Um, these are things that God has just been. That's why we've been talking about momentum because things are happening. You know what momentum means? You're getting victory after victory and things are moving to the point. And we're believing we're about to go to critical mass because that's a whole nother thing where it's just going to go and you don't have to put any effort behind it. Um, that's what momentum oh, is all that. about oh, because we have put too much effort behind what God is doing. And God wants to get us moving because we've been still too long. People got dreams. People got ideals. They got businesses in them. You know, and they keep on talking about them, but they're not moving. So that's what momentum was all about. Go for yourself, for your own advantage, and I'm about to make your name great. That's what he said in Genesis, the 12th chapter. And so he's saying to the people now, it's time for you to get out of wherever you've been because you've been there too long and it ain't produced what you wanted. So why don't you get to moving? So we started moving this year and we just been saying yes. And so yeah, she be coming in, I'll be like, oh, but then I started saying yes. yes. Come on. <laughs> and then Come things on. just started happening. And she said, we're going to Cuba. We're going here. She's going to the Bahamas. I'm not even going there. But we're going, and everywhere we're going, we're going to drop a seed of these books there so people can get a harvest. Amen. Amen. You guys wow me. 
Amen, is there such God. a word as wow? Yes, it is. Okay. We're preaching at this year. Y'all preaching? Yeah, we're wow. preaching at Works of wonder. Works of wonder. Works of wonder. I got a t-shirt wow. that says wow. This is the new thing. God wow. is going to wow us this year. Yeah. He's going to do tremendous this year. This is not a regular year. This is not a yeah. normal year. And so I've been preaching. If you look on some of my posts, I have a t-shirt on that says wow, wow on the front. And on the back of it, it says now. Because the wow, wow. is about to happen now. right now. now. Right yeah. now. Faith is now. Amen. Now. Amen. The yeah. the international tour, mm -hmm. okay, um, starts when again? Well, we, we'll start here. We'll okay. do our first launch, so right. April the 14th. Yes. Right. Um, our ninth anniversary month, we're having our book launch. We want to give away some tickets to that, too. Okay. Well, you know what, folks? Uh, for those that are listening, uh, give us yeah. a call at 216-298-1554. 216-298-1554 and you can also leave comments and um, we can pull a number yeah, we can of pull it off of Facebook off so of if Facebook. you're watching on Facebook live leave a comment the first comment the first caller whoever calls in yeah. will win some tickets and we'll give you the advanced VIP tickets which you get all three books yeah. three CDs yeah. you get to come into the event yeah refreshments and all of that yeah. stuff so for the first person that responds who wants to come on April the 14th from 4 to 6 to the book launch you're welcome if you call in with a good question not just call in call in and have a, a question <laughs> for us so think about a question call in you can win tickets to the book launch awesome. but yeah so we start off here at our church okay. yeah. after that we'll do some local and then in June we'll be in, in London England wow yes. now the, 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 the power that God is starting to demonstrate through your ministry, what do you contribute it to? I mean, what is it that is happening? You know, this because I remember, I remember one year it was a year of being epic. Yeah, epic total, total fulfillment, fulfillment of, of epic, epic proportions. Proportions. <laughs> yeah. And now things are beginning to manifest. Yes, sir. What do you contribute to all this? To? Prayer. I was just going to tell, um, I said, let me go <laughs> first. Just write that. Yeah. And I, I, I say it's spending time with God, right? Yes. So whether you're spending time with God praising, whether you're spending time mm -hmm. with God worshiping, whether you're spending time with God praying, yes. or having that quiet time letting the Holy Spirit minister to you, yes. it's spending time with God. There's no way yeah. that you're going to spend time with God and people not see the residue on you. Yes. Wow. And that, that's true. That's very true. You know, one of the things that I've been doing is making sure that we have intercessory prayer every morning at 930 at, at, Gra at Greater Grace Gospel Amen. Church. Prayer is the key. And it works. Um, we it are, works. I pray. The Bible says, I think we've missed the word. He said my house should be called the house of, of prayer. prayer. Um, and I believe when you set the foundation of prayer and love in your ministry, you got to see signs, wonders, and miracles. So we have prayer, 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 and more prayer, and more prayer. You cannot have enough prayer. And now we're experiencing his glory. Um, literally every Sunday, we're experiencing signs, wonders, and miracles. People getting filled with the Holy Ghost. People coming off the streets, coming off of drugs. People who never had jobs getting, and I mean good jobs, $20 an hour job. Wow. People that got records. Um, um, I mean, just tremendous things are happening because we got momentum now. And we're saying everybody get on this train. Wherever we go, you go to. Let's go back to momentum. Yes, sir. Okay. In the book Momentum. Yes, sir. You you talk about, um, let me see here. You, you talk about ready, set, go. Yes. How to move forward into yes. your destiny. Yes. What is one of the key factors mm -hmm. in momentum? You got to get moving. You gotta move. You, you gotta, gotta do move. something. You gotta do, like my wife <laughs> said, you gotta do something okay. unless you do nothing. Mm. Um, and so it's just simply you gotta start moving. Um, I didn't say you had to start moving fast. Right. Okay. Um, come but on. But you just gotta get moving because every time you start moving and you get a victory, it gives you more movement because then you see you can win again. Then you say, wait a minute, I can win again. You okay. know, and then wow, I did this again. But it's, the key to momentum is movement. It's movement. That's yes. it. And and. And, and what do you do when, when things don't seem to be moving in your direction? I keep moving. moving. I keep moving. You keep moving. Um, and um, Philippians 3 and 14, it says this, um, I'm pressing toward the goal. The goal okay. is what he has spoken to me. 
So no matter what the storm, no matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstance, I ain't paying attention to that. I'm focused on what God has spoken to me yes. and I'm going mm. towards that and I'm not going, you know, like I told you, I used to be a crackhead, so I know how to go after something, amen. Mm -hmm. Come on. You know, uh, no matter what the situation was, I don't care right. if it was a snowstorm, an ice storm, nothing ever mm. stopped me from getting high. And so once God speaks something to you and you know God has given you that goal, the message Bible says, I'm off and I'm running and I ain't turning back. And so that's all you got to do. I'm not saying you're not going to go through trials and sure. tribulations, but check this out. If you get enough momentum, let me ask you this. If a train is moving and it's at full momentum, can anything stop it? Absolutely not. So you become unstoppable. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. <laughs> wow. Hallelujah. Now, uh, uh, Pastor T, the person with the, with power. the power. Who is this person oh. with the power? The person with the power is the third person of the Trinity. It's the third Godhead. It's the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of us. Mm. Yes. That's the power. That's the person with the power. Wow. So that person with the power is living on the inside of you, and you yield yes. to that person. One of the sermons that I ministered, it says, the, you have the Holy Spirit. The question is, does the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit have, have you? you? <laughs> <laughs> does the Holy Spirit got you? Because yeah, 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 you got yeah, the Holy yeah. Spirit, but do the Holy uh, yeah, Spirit have you? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. if the Holy Spirit have you, then you're listening to that still, small voice inside, and you're being guided by yeah. that still, small voice inside. But when, you, when the Holy Spirit doesn't have you, and it's just in you, and you're not yielding to it, then you're not yeah. being led by the Holy Spirit, making good decisions, yes. led by the Holy Spirit because when the Holy Spirit leads you it doesn't always make sense Correct. It doesn't always make sense. You're not going to always understand it. But if you know that you hear the voice of God, um, mm -hmm. and John, I don't know all the scriptures like pastors do, but it said, <laughs> I, my sheep know my, no, my voice, voice. Right, right, right. John and the voice of another, he, they he, will he, not he, follow. Right. So if you know the voice of the Holy Spirit, and when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, you're yes. following that voice, yes. then you're, you're in momentum. Yeah, you're you're in being momentum. both victorious yeah. because of the momentum, and you're listening to that still small voice on the inside. And is there any way that I know that God is talking to me? How do I know? And it's so funny. People ask that question all the time. <laughs> but the thing is, you have to know how God talks to you. Yes. Because God talks to everybody differently. differently. Mm. So it's not the same way. So somebody says, oh, I hear an audible voice. Mm -hmm. Somebody else said, it, I see a dream or a vision. Somebody yeah. else yeah. says, I yeah. answer a question. I mean, yeah. I ask the Holy Spirit of God a question. I'm driving down the street. I look up at the billboard. Boom. There's the answer. I'm in the grocery store. I ask God a question. A little random kid yeah. will come up out of nowhere yeah. and yeah. just say, something so yeah. random but I know that that was God answering my question awesome. so for me personally the way the Holy Spirit speaks to me is just a knowing I can't explain it it's a knowing on the inside yes. and when I have that knowing on the inside I have a peace that goes along with that knowing you know I and I, I can probably even help you with it when your husband goes to the gym <laughs> That's when the Holy Spirit talks. Man, I be like, let me, let me. He don't know what he gonna do. He come home and back to absolutely not. Because this is what she say. I was just thinking. And, then, uh -oh. and, and when then, she say I was I'm just, just thinking, thinking, that means sit down, yeah. put on your helmet, put on your seatbelt, because you about to get <laughs> off and run it, and you ain't turning back. Momentum. Yeah, momentum. momentum. Yeah. And, and what yeah. I find too, when I'm having those thoughts and when I'm sharing it, and people need to get on board with it, if they say no, we'll stop right there. Yeah. So you got to have a yes in your spirit. Gotta yes. You got to know that, right? So that's just not with my husband in ministry, yes. in the ministries, in the boards that I'm on, everything that I'm doing. When I get these thoughts, these this knowing on the inside, and I share, I'm like, okay, let's do this. And then if somebody is in doubt and in fear, they're like, I'm not sure. It's, that's it. It's done right there. Wow. That you just, got a choice. And you just lost your that's opportunity God. for movement. Oppor passing over opportunities mm -hmm. repeatedly. Mm -hmm. yeah. We, we, mm -hmm. we, we, we yeah. know the acronym for that. Yeah. Now, here's the big one. Okay. Y'all are talking about giving. Mm -hmm. Oh, taboo, you know that in the chat. And, and you're saying to us pastors and men and women of God that your giving after this teaching yes, sir. went up 40%. 40 40%. Yes, sir. And still rising. And still rising. Yes, sir. Now, Pastor, 
I know y'all not. I, I know y'all for years, and I know y'all not about gimmicks. We don't do gimmicks. I, I, absolutely not. Never have. Never will. Never will. And this book isn't a gimmick. It is not a gimmick. It is. It is word. Straight up word and straight up testimonies. That's why we did it this way, mm -hmm. because we wanted people to put their testimonies in. Wow. At our ministry, we never had a gimmick, not one gimmick. Never we hear the Lord saying this, right, never we right. hear the number saying this. Though. All we do is teach giving and listen, and we live giving. So we live giving in front of our congregation. We just don't teach it. Come we on. live it. We share what we're doing. Yes, we have given yes. away cars. We have given away furniture. We 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 will pay wait, your wait, rent. Wait, wait, so wait, 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 yes, sir. Wait, 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 wait. Not yes, that sir. was for the big churches. I thought that was the mega no, church. No, sir. No, no, sir. No, sir. It's giving churches. And because we always oh. give, he always gives us stuff to give out. Yes. And so um, when you are a giver, that's word. See, when he said give and I'll give it back to you. Yes. So even when, when you talk about giving, he said, I give seed to, to the, the sower. sower. Yes. So we we are the ones, and I share testimonies on our giving we if people are in need we give and so when people see you doing what you ask them to do mm. then it's easier for them to say wait a minute and listen and we ain't the only ones blessed yes. so you know like some places yes. yeah, the only on. people blessed are the pastors my well, whole congregation blessed <laughs> Wow. The people so, that's connected. That's people connected, connected, yeah. Connected. You know, some and, and, people, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. You got clear. some people that go, uh, but they ain't, but ain't they connect, not connected. They Church ain't got in them yet. Uh -huh, the word go. of God is true. Um, whether you want to believe it or you don't want to believe it, I believe the word of God. And so when we started teaching this giving, it's a, listen, it surprised me. Because all of a sudden, these offerings, they're giving me the sheet on what people were giving. I said, where did this come from? She said, it's the, it's the teaching we did. So we need to turn this into a book so we can be a blessing to the body yes. of Christ. Yes. So we can help grow the body of Christ. Yes. Well, you, th you, th you three. I guess the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Holy Spirit is telling me. I see him. I see him. Y'all three. Yes. <laughs> you all are truly a blessing Amen. to the body of Christ. And all of those that are listening right here on KZ Radio. Um, I have one more thing that just this is going to blow my mind now now folks hold on to your seats I only see the big 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 churches do this one yeah, yeah. you're going to the holy land yes yeah. you're, 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 going, you're going to the holy land March 24th and April to April 2nd 2020 yeah were you at the gym when this happened yep <laughs> It was. It happened again. I went to the gym. When I came back, she said, hey. I was just thinking. I was just thinking. For our 10th anniversary. For our 10th anniversary. Why don't we all go to Israel? Wow. So, yes. Um, New Beginnings Ministry, for our celebration of our 10th year, we're going to take it from the church to where it all started. Wow. To get that experience. That forever changes our life. Tell we went us to the Holy about Land. this. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Tell so us about this experience. We went to the Holy Land in 2012, was it? Yes. We went to the Holy Land with Sid Roth. It's supernatural. Yeah. Greg and I went. And it was such amazing, an amazing experience. If you get an opportunity to go to the Holy Land and walk where Jesus walked. Our hotel was right on the Sea of Galilee. We got baptized in the Jordan River. We were right there on the Mount of Beatitudes. Right. Uh, we went to the Garden of Gethsemane and seen where Jesus was contemplating and the um, disciples communion. went to sleep. We served communion, well, my husband did, served communion at the tomb. So that was such a, uh, a, a, wow. a wow experience for us. And then to have that experience and then to come back, once you go there, you will never read the word the same sure again won't. because you, you were there. So when it talks about the watchmen on the wall, you seen the wall. You mm. know what the, where the watchmen yeah. were. Yeah. You were in the Sea of Galilee. Galilee. You were at the Dead Sea. You were at all those different places that we were able to go to. So, you know, and praying about it and knowing that the 10th year is going to be monumental for, for us. us. Yes. Um, we wanted, we, we're, we're planning for a group of 20, but more can come. We have a travel agent at our church named Sister D. You can give her a call, 216 527 8557, or you can shoot her an email, DHP Travel. Two one two twenty seventeen at hotmail dot com or reach out to the church. Um, if you want to go, it's only three thousand eight hundred dollars. Yeah. Wow. Well, this folks has been truly a blessing. Um, 
they can log on to get more information on your website. What's that website address real quick? Um, www.mynewbeginning.org. Well, we look forward to seeing you again. You guys got to come back yes, before okay. all you go around the world. <laughs> and we'll, we'll pick the winner. I've seen some people ask some questions on Facebook. Excellent. We'll pick They're going to pick the winner and get in contact with you. Well, I love you. Jesus love loves you. Too. And there's nothing y'all can do about it. <laughs> Until next time, God bless. Thank you. Awesome.